Welcome back, everyone, to TNO, the last years of Europe. And I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover. And we're using the TNO, or the New Order, Sony Plus submod. But you probably know that by now. <clears throat> the findings, previously. We can only make assumptions about the Kenpai Tai's connections to the incident at the warehouse. We knew that they were connected somehow, but we didn't know who to and what exactly they were doing yet, Chief Executive. The report underlines clearly what's happening, Police Commissioner Amori, sitting opposite of the Chief Executive, thumbed through the report. Hitachi Middle Management caught inside a warehouse, tried to take an officer hostage in exchange for clear passage. Dead? You can get him alive, he could have been of great use to us, we believe. Based on the information we have, that the employee was sent as a sort of observer from Hitachi to oversee the operation. It appears to have executed our police officer, so the man opened fire to prevent more casualties. It turned out the officer was unharmed, but the employee merely staged to look like he had been shot. We do not know why, but our leading theory is that he wanted to prevent his relatives in Koshu from being affected by the treachery. So he took the easy way out, fool, Akeo mumbled before raising his voice once more. No matter, it's darning enough, darning enough to know that I'm not being paranoid anymore. Hitachi and the Camp Tai and God knows who else are in league with each other. Do not remind me? Looking at what they did, it seems they were getting their sandals wet from crossing the Rubicon, it reads like a coup plot. The plotters pose a very real threat to the security of Guangdong, yes. Times of the urgency, they must be stopped, Chief Executive. The Commissioner straightened his back, ready to receive the orders for a complete crackdown. Regardless of a violent purge of these unsavory individuals, would only make us look weak, incompetent. Unworthy of sovereignty, perhaps, to the diplomatic ramifications of such an endeavor. Although it most likely gives reg place, regardless. Chief Executive, the Commissioner slouched slightly, unsure if he was overstepping his boundaries. What do you propose we do? I'm going to have a chat with the Kenpai Tai. While I'm at it, can someone give me the number for the Japanese Consul General, which I think we might have read last time? Oh, oh well. An easy trip. A triad smuggler moving hard cash from back from another successful journey spent <clears throat> selling Guangdong and bootlegged American merchandise within China. Tense as he approached a checkpoint next to the sign, incorrectly marked check checkpoint in English. There was a guard waiting after processing the people in front of him. The smuggler was worried. He knew that since the Yasuda collapsed on him, the policemen had been cracking down hard. A sign that was that fact that he had spent an hour waiting at the border, where it once been much quicker. Being concerned at the prospect of being singled out for an enforcement action, he grabbed a large wad of his own money to bribe the guards. However, his contact had told him to, to use a passphrase. When the guard came up to this window, he uttered the passphrase, and then the guard smirked in recognition. The guard looked over at the contents without paying much attention, came back to the window and said, Well, sir, you got no weapons or narcotics in there, so you can go through. With a wink and a nudge, he added, No need to declare anything for import, and let the man through. So he increased try control, increases corruption, increases China's opinion, though, we lose political power. Increases his corruption by oh, actually quite a bit. Um, that changes mindset. Wait, those are due to bull goods. We're inspecting them. We make better use of resources elsewhere, huh? I'd love to do that, but we can't let Stanley all have his day. Why not? Also, right now, as you can see, we are trying to still fight down here. Uh, 24 to 35 seats. Not ideal. Really not ideal here at all for the regions of Guangdong, but we're dealing with it right now. And we have the product cycle coming on later. Corruption is not extreme, so we're okay. We need mountainous tasks. We're also down here um, trying to fight across the straits. We need straight. Well, we wanted to fight across the straits, god dang it. Jungle conditions. So let's see what happens down here. You can just go to Kupang. And we're currently doing raiding the Yakuza warehouses. Did I read this one last time? I can't remember, I'll be honest. I really can't remember. Uh, where is it? Right here. The other element of Guangdong's underworld, the Yakuza and their respectable representative, Yokoi Hideki, are firmly in the pocket of the senior parts of the Japanese expatriate population in Guangdong and are not at all amenable to what we propose as the future of Guangdong. Thankfully, we can give them Stanley Hope, and as tried context, a leg up in their war in the shadows by tipping the scales of law and order against the Yakuza's businesses and warehouses along the Pearl River. We'll not stand idly by and allow the Yakuza siren song of drugs and easy money in thrall Guangdong, not while we have something to say about it and out of the shell companies. In recent years, and in line with Yokoi Hideke's own background, as a quasi-legitimate industrialist and financer, the Yakuza have begun to diversify their operations, engaging in lo money laundering and white-collar fraud through a network of shell companies and financing bodies that operate within Guangdong's free-willing economy. While we remain dedicated to the principles of competitive capitalism, we're also accommodative of criminality masquerading as capitalism, and we're tying the noose around these conduits of misconduct. So, oh, solemn representation. <clears throat> This isn't your ground. The most powerful group in, or most powerful people in Guangdong locked themselves in a room booked in some nameless high rise uh, spire aiming to dominate the Koshu skyline. Gathered in a circle, Maruto Kao, Kuno Miyazaki, the Kenpai Tai, General Agano of the IJA, and Japanese Consul General Takashima. Clutch a police report and copy. The Chief Executive and Kuno Miyazaki replaced opposite of each other, spending their time staring daggers into each other's souls. The clash of wills, of course. This is certainly thorough, Chief Executive, when Miyazaki spoke, choosing his words with extreme care, but meaningless. Most of the circum is circumstantial evidence. Uh, I think you'll find that we've gone above and beyond mere circumstance, Colonel. Morita Akeo fiercely kind of attacked. That report is 200 pages long. You all read it, too, no? We have photos, fingerprints, uh, fingerprints, testimony. I would not call that meaningless. Wouldn't you, Chief Executive? Colonel Miyazaki returned to the volley of his own, turning towards the two neutral arbitrators. 
Consul General, General Nagano, you must see that this is a waste of time. I can't buy time. I've been a force of security and co-prosperity for nearly 20 years in the rural River Delta. Now we could be in a league with Manchuria to create some sort of factum is insane. Insane the chief executive prepared his final offensive to finish, Miyazaki. It'd be quick, clean, and brutal. Exactly what they prided themselves on. What is insane is your agents continuing to blockade the largest airport in Guangdong and flagging down Hitachi. And if both of you, the Consul General, slammed the report down under the conference table, neither of you still seem willing to have a rational enough conversation, so it seems I must step in. You're like picturing children. If you continue to plot and scheme around each other, then my next report to Tokyo will go into lurid detail and ask them to find exactly what the Camp Tire are doing here and how it came to do that. Do you want that? <clears throat> the room returned to silence. Juno Gano cleared his throat and stood up. This war of yours will come to an end, or I will end it for you. Another day, another raid. Ooh, we can decrease Japan, uh, Yakuza control, which is not bad. Another day. It was a relatively pleasant evening. With a comparative lack of smog, Sergeant Chan Ka Kui sat down in his detachment's mess hall and reflected on the way things had turned out when he waited for his meal. His joints ached from exertion, and the wounds he had gotten from his recent work stung him here and there. It had been his detachment's fifth raid on a warehouse that month. These raids were a difficult thing, for certain. Um, if the officer set to work on this kind of thing, uh, Chan reflected, he was certain to expect a per sustained pattern of heavy work and just as heavy violence. All the more of the raids were part of those crackdowns and organized crime. Came around every now and then, like this one. Oh, god dang it, we lost that. Chan had been keeping around to interrogate the prisoners. Uh, these, you noted, were invariably Yakuza, who all play the same sort of broken record whenever he questioned them. This is one side of crackdown. You're leaving the trials untouched. This, isn't this injustice or something? Touch your hair on my head and you're a dead man. Don't you have any shame? To that, Chan would give the same answer each time without fail. I'm not feeling shame about you, Degener. It's getting a long overdue comeuppance. You're too tired, really, to worry about the triads. Why would he care about what happened so long as some criminals, especially foreigners like the Japanese guys, got in prison? At that point, a cook came clattering along with his dinner. A bowl of kitchen-made pork ramen with a side of chicken carage. Chan dropped the line of thought and started eating, enjoying the taste and forgetting his prior anger. Chappie's influence isn't completely bad after all, he decided, while well, thinking about his plans for future raids. I think I want to put my best foot forward for the next few raids and better stop out the Yakuza out with it. We can make better use of resources elsewhere. Well, unfortunately, we have to do that one. Um, yeah, actually, we're doing exceedingly well here. Out of the shell companies, we're running out of things we can do. The Organized Crime Bureau. Uh, a popular joke among the cadets in the 18 Ocean Park goes like this Guangdong is a sterling example of Pan Asian harmony. Every man of every race lives and does in accordance with the other. The Yakuza pretend their opium is medicine. The triads pretend their migrants are legal, and the businessmen pretend their money is clean, and we pretend to arrest them all. Even to bring them to task were popular. However, the Guangdong police force is ill-equipped to do so. Curtailing organized crime requires a certain acumen and experience. Both have been steadily weeded out from the ranks ever since the refreshment into the Camp Itai's glorified auxiliaries. Changing this regard begins by bringing certain retirees back into the force. Those promising once recruits, once recruits dismissed or sidelined after burrowing their noses where they shouldn't, with then the new commissioner promises a reckoning for the high-class misfits, Guangdong's uh, lowly underbelly. Oh, we've got the under the good. There's no longer a direct threat. That's good. Demeritus. Uh, oh, ooh, look at this. Lieutenant Hayakawa, reassignment to Korea. He's one of my best men in the Pearl River. I refuse to send him to Yunnan or Shangxi or whatever crap all the chief executive has planned for him. I get Tokyo to agree to that. Good track record. Gift him. A hard worker. Don't get too arrogant, Miyazaki. What happened in that room was completely unacceptable. We're very lucky that the Consul General's report didn't go into detail about just what exactly you were doing. Kono Miyazaki put two fingers to the bridge of his nose, massaging his weary skin. Jiro Nagano and him sat opposite of each other. <clears throat> and yet another shapeless, nameless conference room. That was Guangdong in a single frame. For every man that w with the will to do what needed to be done, there are five other drones huddled around a plywood table debating some semantics and jargon. Yes, I suppose we are. Cannot say the same for Hitachi. Komai would not be pleased, to say the least. He was the most eager of all of us to see it through. The colonel put the lieutenant's file away. The picture on the file showed an eager young man surrounded by his family. He was holding a katana, most likely a family possession, and holding what appeared to be a former ponytail. So eager to serve his country, yet doomed for mediocrity for trivial reasons. What a waste. Ah, <sighs> that reminds me, General Nagano interrupted. You, or one of your subordinates, preferably one that sells their hands clean of this bloody affair, need to call up the Komai and get him to stand down. Uh, my more financially inclined friends are telling me that Hitachi stock has plummeted. Those types of uh, um, numbers tend to drive a man, like him, to making rash decisions. Like me. I'll get some newcomer to do it. Prove their worth, Miyazaki nodded. I could have, uh, could have been better, but it could have been worse. If he keeps quiet and fires some low-level ploys, so then he'll manage to find. We'll all be fine. Now, on to the next one. Fine, Captain Xiao. Also, good track record. Lower. Dismiss him. Not everyone can make it out. Hey, let's, we made it out. Nice. Oh, good God. Oh, oh God. We are literally 0.48 higher. 0.45 higher there. So, let's go look see here real quick. So, right now, hey, 56% support. Not bad. 
67% support, not bad. That's 63% support. Honestly, this could be a lot worse. I'm kind of pleased with that. Now, what I'm not pleased with is Itachi and how they needed to die. We have 45 votes, which is still not good enough. Kagagururi. Hiroshi uh, Yamauchi a side of the opposite end of the fine yet daunting mahogany table inside a luxurious meeting room fancy facing not one but two of Guangdong's most affluent captains of industry. Stanley Ho, the king of gambling himself, and Li Kuxing, the head of Chung Kong's holdings. Being in the same room with them would make most people nervous, especially when they're trying to eke out an agreement between them and a company like Nintendo, when not Yamauchi. He sat there stern, confident, and resolute as he explained the details and mutual benefits an agreement between them and Nintendo would have, being professional and straightforward as he conversed with the two men. And that's why we at Nintendo believe that a deal between us and your companies will be mutually beneficial. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. He remarked respectfully, reaching out from across the table to hand them documents of financial projections for the deal to the two men. That's all wonderful, Mr. Yamauchi, but what interests me the most is that you decided to personally ask to meet us rather than our representatives. I'd love to hear your answer why. Kishin replied, skimming through the papers Yamauchi had handed him. Yamauchi cleared his throat and paused for a moment. Yes, sir, I had decided to personally meet with you both because this deal is tremendously important to Nintendo, and I feel right trying to sell a mutually beneficial deal to just some representatives. I'm not afraid to say that we at Nintendo have been struggling, but because we are struggling, we are prepared to go to the extra mile for everything, including your, our products. That's why I had wanted to meet with you both, to prove that Nintendo is a first-rate company worthy of your cooperation. He replied, bowing his head towards them. Well then, Mr. Yamauchi, you have yourself a deal to produce your wonderful Hanafuda cards and some other gambling equipment on the side. Maybe even some electronics with Pachinko, he equipped. Citing the papers as the Kishin, you're a very lucky man, he remarked. At that moment, Yamauchi felt catharsis. He had left luck to have it, and now is rewarding him handsomely with an illustrious feature for Nintendo. A good gamble. And we have a cup of coffee or two. And almost 1966. Look at that. Out of the shell companies and breaking the shell. Wo Wang Ho Fai, a Zuzhen bureaucrat known as Ishida Shintaro to his colleagues, also would be a qualified auditor. So it made sense that one of Amori's lieutenants would come up to him in secret one evening and ask for help. What is it you want me to do then? Uh, go to uh, into Yokoi Hideke's various legitimate business activities. We suspected our front for money laundering. At that, Wang Smart had always hated the Yakuza. Oh, screwing over the Yakuza it is, huh? I'm in. Took some creative calls, a few threats deployed here and there, but the income records were eventually audited, and the situation became clear. The list of those Yakuza and Yokoi owned businesses that were berated slowly took shape. Oh, it's only October. For some reason, I thought it was December. For a long submitted the report, however, you made sure to do one last thing. You arranged for someone to, keep, to be kept safe by any means possible, making sure that the Yakuza would never get their hands on them. As he made the call and we watched provingly from a distance as the raids began, he got a hold of his relatives. He saw two with Commissioner Amori's help, but they were all safe and sound, and accepting that we had done his duty, I mean, Khan went back to work. Ooh. Got a hold of one. Uh, sell him as if it were extra insurance to be deadly sure of his family's safety. You know what? Uh, if you want to buy this, please go ahead. Yay! Oh, we can purge corrupt officials. We definitely need to do that. I was going to do regions of Guangdong and like and continue increasing this and whatnot. Um, I guess I can wait for now. I do want to purge this first, so. Smoldering frustration. Isn't this just not possible anymore? The IJ contact said our deal was made when there wasn't a paper trail leading back to us now. Now you do what you're told, Lieutenant. Komai tried to avert his glance towards the newspaper from the newspaper on his desk. <coughs> There's a glass full of a cloudless, colorless liquid. An experimental Hodak Hokkaido Sake it was a drink that he reserved for his inevitable victory against all the forces that Guanda could throw at him. Inevitable, what a word. When the chief executive finds out just how far your little rabbit hole goes down, you expect to get any mercy from him? Either we strike now or get picked off later already having everything in place. Actually, I'm sorry, Kamai, there's nothing I can do. Kamai stayed silent, glaring at the newspaper on his desk. Can't I tie implicit in plot? The image on the front of this cover was a chief executive, clear and portrait-esque. He was speaking to a crowd adorned with banners and signs just like how a complacent king would speak to his peasants after an attempt on his life, still without empathy, without care, without vision. No, there isn't. There never was. Come on, put down the phone. Without another word, after a few seconds, the Tachi CEO plucked the phone from its rest and put his finger to the dial. There's still another way. There always was. Yet, as he punched the last numbers in, he felt a wave come over him. How dare the camp I time? How dare the garrison? They look upon the degenerate wasteland coast, and they deem it acceptable? <clears throat> He picked up the phone and prepared to speak to the benefactors as the line connected Komai. Uh, picked up the receiver and slung it against the far wall, shattering it. Komai Kenichiro put his hands to his face, caressing his cracked skin and seemed to uh, utter something that almost sounded like, How dare I? Ah, Hitachi and Komai Kenichiro have exhausted their possibility to try and kill us, and have also exhausted their Nissan funds, which stops their special annual growth. <coughs> Excuse me. Very good. Fantastic. Yeah, let's get there as fast as you can. Come on. Fair with the friends. Marita Kao lowered across the table by the two legislative council members sitting across from him. Nimoto Tatamori and Nonishi Akihiro, just two of the many cockroaches that had scurried under Hitachi's bed, but with Hitachi defeated and Komao's gamble lost, now they were back trying to get into the chief executive's bed again. 
These men were absolutely morally bankrupt. They had no loyalty to anyone but themselves and followed money like pigs nothing for truffles. They were vermin and absolutely unfit to serve, and Marie Kale was naturally about to accept them back into the fold. There was no other option. The chief executive uh, needed uh, to regroup and rebuild after the chaos of Hitachi's failed coup, and this meant bringing all hands on deck. No matter how suspect those hands might be, Nimoto and Onishi knew it too, but their outwardly contrite expressions barely masked their smug smiles. Swollen the bile that threatened to from his throat, the chief executive coughed once and shook his hands with both men. Head under the table, the other fist was clenched so tightly that his fingernails drew blood. Welcome back, my friends. Oh, God. Mm. There's the experimental rifle. Alright, why are we using tanks for this, though? You know, so many tanks. Well, since we have a little bit of power, we'll do that one here. Come on. Oh, we still have resources. So much, uh, I was looking at this just because, like, I wanted to do more here, but honestly, I'd rather work on, uh... Just keep building up our country. That's what I care about more. Nice. So right now, we have... How many votes? 40... Wait, I thought we got two more seats, though. We just got two more seats. Oh god, voting on the public health ordinance and legislative council to commence when this focus is selected. Uh, we do need to start selecting, like, stuff to do. Of course, it's the land we stand on, too. The foundation of Guangdong's electronic economy lies on the land, and its resources, and its people. And the networks that links them both together. But the usage and development of this land and the treatment of peoples who live here have been done too haphazardly over the decades without thought for sustainability or justice. This must change. The new bureau. Commissioner of Mori Khan of the Guangdong Police Force took an appreciative look at the dossier in front of him. It contained personal files for people who had formed the core of his new organized uh, crime bureau. The dossier was not that thick, and that was for a good reason. These new officers had to meet a harsh set of qualifications. They had to be incorruptible. Not for them falling victim to bribery, honeypots, or pro, uh, quid pro quos. They had to be single and physically fit, and preferably good fighters. Omori reflected on the similar jobs he'd seen done against the Yakuza in Japan, and the unique stresses the work placed on people. This fact, combined with the unique political environment of Guangdong, where Stanley Ho and his tribe had to be left alone as a cooperating element, made it a job that not just anyone could work on. As a result, there were a few candidates, and even the ones who had been named ran the risk of failing short. Or falling short. But Omori thought, it was more than worth the difficulty. If it could help organize crime, <coughs> keep organized crime and its hanger-ons under control in places where the public could see them, he can embarrass the Kampai Tai guys and their supposedly omnipresent intelligence networks. That conference was shortly interrupted, however, when Amori realized that if he had any didn't have enough men, he would be wouldn't be able to move as fast or effectively as, say, the Kampai Tai and the military garrison. With that intrusive thought rolling in his mind, Amori decided, no, keep the standards, there can be no other way. <coughs> Excuse me. I like this one, but we gotta do this one. Who needs political power, you know? Come on, you're almost there. And well, the militia got there first. Oh, come on. So, does this work if you do this too? Because we need straight crossings. So, yes, we, it does. So, you don't even have to use the experimental division. <coughs> Excuse me. So we need mountain terrain too. Is there any mountains up here? There's a lot of jungle. Well, we might not get that one done. But at the very least, maybe we get maybe we get jungle. Let's get three done. Sometimes we can't get them all done. It really sucks. Then we get the book's complaint next. What is this? So we'll demand Colonel Miyazaki withdraw the camp attack to the barracks and let the GPF to be the main security organ of Guangdong. He requires demand proof that the GPF is ready to take over the responsibilities. After seeking the old colonel police, or seeing the old colonial police and found wanting, the camp attack had shouldered the final authority over Guangdong's law since its founding. For the time being, they were assured until reorganized officers are deemed fit to exercise their responsibilities on their own. These 20 years have proved that nothing is more permanent than temporary measures, and with the GEPF's disappointing state, not everyone begrudged over overstaying guests either. <coughs> Such opinions have begun changing since Leco introduced his Mali reforms. When before, the Camp Atai were grudgingly seen doing what the police clearly could not, they're now becoming cold, aloof, out-of-touch foreigners, and turning them fairly into our own detective's work. <coughs> Perhaps now is the time to exchange pleasantries with Colonel Miyazaki. Even a rock like him will budge with enough push. Well, maybe. Hey, we're doing the line doctor. Nice. So we got all 1965 stuff done. Fantastic. Anything here we can do? Sure, why not? It's gonna take forever to get over there. Mountain and jungle. As much as I want to do that, I do. We do need more seats. Forty-five is just not enough. Let's 
Can you just make it like really hot here so we can find like really hot temperatures? That'd be great. Culture is what? Ambon Timor. Nice. 43 seats. My god. Hibuka's complaining. I've appeared to rain. The sky and coast you cleared up. The sun and a few clouds remain around and were actually visible for once through the smog. Unfortunately, Ibuka Masuru's mood had not cleared up much to match the weather, so Matsushita Masaharu was forced to listen to him complain in a boardroom in Fujitsu headquarters. Darren Matsushita, I can't stand the way that idiot Morita is taking us. He's running around doing the most inefficient and irrational rubbish you can think of, and there's one thing I'm certain about it, it's that his stupid sentimental plans will stand in the way of Guangdong's prosperity. Him and the good for nothing Lee will do us all in. And this asinine plot of his to help his people by keeping them on their own lands to do the jobs they have been trained for? B.S. Stuff and nonsense. The chief executive doesn't need to make concessions to the unwashed and trained incompetent masses. If Booker took a moment to catch his breath and shook his head bitterly, I spend too much bloody time on politicking and not enough on business. Masashita rolled his eyes. What, are you re realize that just now, Ibuka? Uh, Ibuka glared at him. He continued to do more seriously, but in all seriousness, Lee and Morito needed to convince me to agree with them because I really not sold on it at the moment. Um, I do have one question, though. Ibuka nodded and Masashita asked his question, why not call him Komai? Uh, Ibuka visibly played out. I prefer not to involve with uh, him or Itachi if I can help it, Masashita. Uh, he's too brutal for my taste. Masashita nodded his understanding. Fair point. For a little bit more corruption, you get one seat. Honestly, you'd rather just do this then. Let's, see what, let's try this first. Public health ordinance, see what, how that turns out for us. Stopgap efforts to combat the various health crises in Guangdong simply cannot increase the overall quality of health without a concerted uh, and focused effort across multiple governmental departments. However, the only way to expand the powers of the government enough to accomplish this and to contract dedicated enough companies to address this issue of necessary flies through the Legislative Council. It's just not hot enough here for this. It's rainy though. Christmas War. Oh. <clears throat> it's very rainy down here. Very moist. The time has come. <clears throat> A time to come. Okay, it's time to come over. It was do or die. This is evident to the three men sitting in the office of the chief executive in Koshu. Marita Kao, Li Kishin, and Omori Khan reflected on the work that had brought them to the stage. And were having reached a point where they could at last force the camp by tie the lunatics back to the barracks and out of Guangdong's law enforcement scene. This time isn't a Kao Khan. We need to call Colonel Miyazaki and get him to leave Guangdong alone and let Khan's men take the lead instead, Li said. Omori nodded and scowled. Make no mistake, gentlemen. It'll be a thrice darn gamble. Miyazaki, the egotistical lunatic, thinks poorly of my boys at the best of times. In fact, <clears throat> He frequently says we're just horrid of mongrelizing confidence. Uh, never mind that, that the mongrels are the ones building the radios and computers his lot like overusing. Where does brow furrowed? Uh, there's a chance isn't there that he'll uh, refuse outright. A spew some boilerplate about the police being too undermanned and underequipped to take their place. Talk about taking their words under advisement, right? I found that in a set of meeting minutes the last time a chief executive tried to dry the camp by tie out. The other two nodded. Uh, Marita sighed. The best we not let them come to that then. Let's get ready, gentlemen. He reached for the phone as Liam Omori nodded. Yes, good afternoon. It's time. Bring Colonel Miyazaki in, please. At least he's learning. The melancholy of Colonel Miyazaki. When the matter was put forth... Uh, was put to him the right way by the three-man team of Omori, Lee, and Morito, the camp attacked Colonel Miyazaki had no choice but to admit defeat. <clears throat> Let's look at that. The Guangdong police, guided by the threefold efforts of the chief executive and his lieutenants, had turned the Camp Thai detachment of Guangdong into a complete anachronism. anachronism. The expansion of police capabilities had nearly made the Camp Thai both unnecessary and ineffective in the eyes of the government and the public. Considering this, Miyazaki was visibly beginning to wilt at that Morita, feeling a measure of sympathy for him, tried to offer him some assurances about his role in the country. Without a question, Colonel, the Camp Otao will not be expelled from Guangdong. The very suggestion, of course, is outrageous. No, what we need for you is to remain on call when we need you and return to your regular duties. Policing the Imperial Japanese Army Detachment and watching over the Japanese population. Miyazaki nodded and suppressed the urge to say cold comfort or something crasser along those lines. Instead, he forced a smile and bowed from his seated position. Thank you, sirs. If you need us, we're ready. Fantastic. That's actually very good for us. <coughs> I apologize. I don't know what's wrong with my voice. 
1938, pillars of smoke over the horizon. Several weeks ago, Lam had heard that the Japanese had made land on Guangzhou, their division scouring over the villages that dotted the coast and for supplies and pillage. Stories from fleeing refugees painted images of men in khaki-colored uniforms we waving bolt-action rifles, the sun seeming to bake the ground beneath them. Pillars of smoke stood over the horizon in a call of distress. Lam and his uncle quickened their step, the firewood taking a toll on their backs. Although uh, through late autumn uh, they walked, imprinting their footprints on wet, fresh wet soil, branches snapped. The underbrush rustling in their wake, they saw the wood wooden roofs of the village standing tall and tapped them, they sighed with relief. However, just beyond the gates, those men in khaki colored uniforms stood waving the rifles of the assembled villagers. Hands were raised, some in alarm, others in defiance, from the windows to the barrel of muskets gleamed at the soldiers ready to fire. The Japanese left shortly after, bolts of silk in their hands, the rifles in their hands still pointed towards the village. Uncle chased them after them, the soldiers alarmed. After two minutes of uncommunicative exchange, the officer were offered a, him a quizzical look and then spoke something that Lamb would spend a lot of time trying to recall. In a flash, the officer raised his voice and cocked his rifle, firing at a point-blank range into the uncle's right foot. He screamed while the Japanese marched away laughing. The rest of the village roughed at the sound and bore uncle to his home. Lamb heard him mutter, first Guangzhou, now us, over and over. Things will never be the same again. I guess we got some yearly surplus now, that's good. <coughs> yes, sir. <coughs> Alright, Master Cheetah, what do you got to offer us? Ooh, now it's hot. Can you at least be 30 degrees here? 30 oh, I guess not. That's why we keep fighting this area, just in case, too. Um, way too ahead of time. Railway guns. We probably don't need railway guns as uh, China. Or, you know, Guangdong. Let's go and do this one because this will reduce by 12% and that'll get us back down to a lower level to give us more political power too. So if not, then I'll have to redo this because usually I thought they would give us some sort of like, hey, you want to bribe us? And we'll be like, okay. Because if not, we'll do this one. Corruption in Guangdong is in detest or reviles so much as it accepted on immutable fact of life like loan sharks, opium addicts, and the stench of piss behind the Causeway Bay d Depot. It melts into the drab, dry concrete and infuses itself with the rebar deep, always part of their background, but never the facade itself. Perhaps, ex uh, ex ex perhaps in price, except perhaps in price, tags with extra zeros, gentlemen in tacky suits, another uh, opium in one hand, and a gun in the other. A commissioner can talk all he wants, but as long as the boys in blues talk shop with gangsters in broad daylight, one arsenal streets will talk is just that, talk. It was clear the hard-boiled cynicism was what kept Guangdong alive since 1945, but... For the three pros to thrive within his lifetime, the chief executive knows he must make it do without, somehow, excess corruption. So we'll try this one. So maybe instead of doing this one, we'll go back, and then we'll do these into the ranks, maybe. Fresh faces. <clears throat> Adjust incentives. Increase admin costs, huh? Hotline for petty corruption. Audit senior officers. Yeah, we'll probably do all this stuff first. Maybe into the ranks. The first thing that separated the Guangdong police force from the triad they said was about the sister and pay them taxes so the former can rob them out of house and home. The second was that they wore blue khaki shorts. Stanley Ho's boys dressed themselves smart, see? Under so many spanking new management, however, Commissioner Mori will have decided the bone sisters men skim off like helicopters is worth the people's lack of trust. And maybe get rid of the stupid shorts while he's at it. Fresh faces. It seems contradictory, doesn't it? How does a civil service designed to service the people become such a stained burden upon these very same people? The commissioner shrugged his shoulders. If I can knew, my job would be void, wouldn't it? If I can't understand the beginnings of our feelings, well, I can at least try to understand how I can fix them. He paused for a moment, looking from left to right over his assembled team of police officers. <clears throat> We've become an organization that treats the bad like royalty and the good like criminals. I want you all to know that this is the mindset of the past. I want you to all know the competent, the brave, and the daring among you that will be rewarded. He paused for another moment, briefly making eye contact with Lamb. And I want the imposters among us to know I am watching. The newly appointed police commissioner, Mori Khan, uttered... Inspired utter silence from his officers. For Lamb, it was difficult to imagine that some of his colleagues feared the man, whether they were suspect or not. Chatter began to slowly pick up as Omori left the room, which seemed to be the commissioner's informal dismissal of the assembled subordinates. Some of the officers left uh, behind Omori, most likely to return to duty, but among the rest of the officers was an air of excitement. The younger officers seemed the most jubilant, and even some of the seniors had asserted even before Lamb's arrival apparently uh, appeared happy with the removal of the old commissioner. Ching is, Ching is coming was a phrase passed around more than a few times, especially by certain Zong man of face as fresh as Amori's. Lamb grabbed Zong, pulling him to the side. The man reminded Lamb of himself, and the attitude he possessed was refreshing. I never asked Zong, why did you join the force? The man smiled at Lamb, answering with the most common phrase I heard in the office, to support myself and my family. 
confront Yokoi Hideke. For Stanley Ho to decisively seize control of the underworld, you'll need to eliminate or otherwise isolate his anemesis in the Japanese underworld. Yokoi Hideke, the vulture capitalist and fixed for the Yakuza. We can only pray that we have the strength in the Stanley's associates, and weaken Yokoi's enough that our attempt to box Yokoi in for good will not be disrupted. It's time to call Yokoi for a little conversation. Let's hope that we've done enough to weaken the Yokoi and his Yakuza friends before we call him in. And we're still fighting down here, but we're doing alright. I'm uh, just waiting for it to get really freaking hot down here. So, also, we are slowly increasing how many seats we have. We'll get one for Fujitsu, maybe Hitachi, because I don't want the 5% corruption from Sony, because that's just too much for us to deal with. So, uh, overall, we still have a little bit of surplus. We've got a lot of growth. Overall, it's pretty decent. Uh, probably still getting worse, unfortunately, but, you know, we're working on it. I believe I sent the tank away, but, you know what, well, that's alright. If it's really freaking hot, ah, it's not hot enough yet. So, into the ranks, shall we? As we get to January 1966, finally. And there you go. And we do this one next. And follow it up behind that one with Corruption, Corruption, the Hotline for Petty Corruption. The uphill battle Chief Executive Morita faces in its anti corruption drive stems in large part from the people's effort themselves, or rather, its absence. They're no ignorant sheep. They've seen the faces in the government house come and go, yet they've seen nothing out of the promises let go bandies out either. So, why bother putting any work themselves? This is a prophecy that fulfills itself seemingly from the government to government. And there's a novel solution 25 266 366. Dial on your phones and report the dodgy clerk from Central to Morita himself. Maybe it won't make a dent on the more clandestine networks the Yakuza fall back on, but it'll assure your jaded offices man that it had made a difference, no matter how minor. We're going to keep increasing corruption as much as I want to do this one. We need those seats and colleagues. They're even shuffling around division heads, and look at all those darn captain besides. I'm sure these reshuffles didn't happen all the time. Zong Man, the newcomer uh, officer Lamb, a friend a few weeks ago, looked as wide-eyed as a deer in headlights. And he had every right to be. Lamb can remember the last commissioner ever to order a reshuffle in the first place. And the reshuffle seems to almost displace all the Lamb's old colleagues. He could recognize maybe a one in every uh, uh, 30 as an officer from Koshu, but it seemed to most to come from the seas outside of Koshu entirely. As lucky that at least got to stick together, right, Lamb? Yeah, I'm more of those dead serious with the speech you made. Uh, the reshuffle is meant to break apart those corruption rings we cop so much flack for. Keep the informants separated from the people they were informing. If I had to guess, some of these newcomers are secret police meant to infiltrate us and weed out anybody that might get re-involved in bribery or such. I believe some bureaucr bureaucracies are even getting the same treatment as we are. It was important that Lam and Kurt Zong. The man only spent a couple weeks in the forest and was easily impressionable. Seeing the station being turned on its head just after he'd finally settled in would be shocking enough as is, let alone having to worry about some secret police force inside of it. Would anything even get done with a, such a patchwork police force? It's interesting. It's probably the best move Amori could have made. I'm just waiting for it to get really hot and then we'll start attacking again in 1938, which I read earlier, so... There you go. I got rid of our tank here just because it's just the supply is just so bad. So hopefully... Oh. No reinforcements from the capital. What, what do you mean no reinforcements from the capital? What are you talking about? It must be bugged or something. How about you guys go here? Or those guys go. It's fine. Republic of Indonesia. Catching the snake. Wong Kin Yun, oh, the midnight shift, uh, took care to appear innocuously delayed as he peeled away from the gaggle of men coming off the factory floor. It was past 11, and the yawning security guards were as keen as anyone else to scurry on home, on to one of the few days the night shift was cut mercifully short. For 20 minutes, Wong waited as a throng of workers dispersed until the last of the overseers uh, heaved shut the factory door. Shutting the floodlights off as his eyes adjusted, Wong watched as a few men stepped back into the open. Lao, the welder, pulled together stools and a tight circle around an impromptu cardboard table. Chung, the machinist, laid out some bowls of borrowed from the cafeteria. Uh, Ip, the assembler, a groan as he put down a makeshift platter of turn up cake, dumplings, and a few oranges. It was small, but it was free. It was known that there would be nothing for them in their sparring company dormitory, and the cooks had understood hiding the plate in the kitchen refrigerator for them to retrieve later. Finally, Wong brought his contribution a smuggled bottle of cheap rice wine, lacking in everything but potency. The assembled company clapped quietly as Wong poured each man a small serving. On any other day, there were nameless cogs in the machine, taken from the homes and families in the country to feed the hunger of the three pearls, but for one night. Under the faint red glow of the emergency lights, it could be family of their own. Gong Hai Fat Choi. Cool. 
Okay, I want you to get over here faster. Come on. Because I want you over here. French victory, huh? Catching the snake. 30 minutes before the meeting, a mission Commissioner Amori arrived at the Chief Executive Morita Keo's office in Koshu's government complex. Ooh. With the requested stack of folders in his hand. Um, uh, you've kept my men awfully busy chasing after the Yakuza these past few months. Amori deposited the papers on Morita's desk with an annoyed huff. I just hope Mr. Ho's people have done as much behind the scenes as we have in our official capacity. Yeah, he has, Li Kishin assured Amori. Uh, we wouldn't have called Yukoi in if we didn't have him dead rights. I've seen airtight cases in Tokyo, Chief Executive Lee, or Chief uh, Secretary Lee. Amori stated, his jaw tightening. This isn't one of them. This isn't a legal argument, it's a showdown. If Yukoi doesn't blink, I'm aware of the consequences, Commissioner Amori just stated, more confidently than he had felt. I'm prepared to accept them, whatever they may be. One way or another, Yukoi and his Yakuza associates will remain in their activities. Thirty minutes later, Yukoi made his entrance. Our prior actions will nudge his gamble towards our favor. Fifty votes, we've got him. And I'm going to go back here and do this one. And I'm going to cut, cut down on corruption. I don't like this. Why is it like this? Seriously, like, what do you mean, no... Manpower reinforcement is not possible. At the current location. Do we need to come over here? Because, do you get... Ah, so you come back over here. Okay, that's fine. You know what? You come back over here first. If you get back over here first, you can do that. A strategic withdrawal. Times are... Bad, as you say. Uh, Yukoi's face was impassive, but he was carefully scrutinizing every piece of evidence of Morita, Commissioner Amori, and Leah put before him. But I don't see any how any of this means anything to me. <clears throat> Stonewalled. That had been the entire course of the meeting with Yokoi Hideki, who had a ready alibi or could have professed innocence over every incident the police and Stanley's men investigated, but Morita kept saying this, that kept the hits coming. And Yukoi was visibly taking more time in his answers, getting his story straight. Got the crap, Yukoi. Mori stabbed at one of the ports with his pen. Your organization is being rolled up. Retired. Even if you don't see the inside of a cell, you'll be left with nothing sooner or later. So confident, Yukoi shot back. But the police don't have the best record for finishing what they started. Uh, who says it's only the police? Lee muttered. We're only we're offering you deals. Better to live poor than die with nothing. Yukoi's eyes narrowed, his hackles rising. You watch your tone with me, you Chinese a-hole. Or, or what, Marita Bark, cutting Yukoi off? It's as the commissioner said, the police and the tribes are muscling you out. Here's my advice. One businessman to another. A smart man cuts his losses. Only a stupid man fights a losing battle to the end when they have other options. Yukoi fell silent, the clock ticking away steadily in the background. He finally let a loose a, a melodramatic sigh. Fine, there's no shortage of places to turn a profit in the sphere anyways. The, Yuzak, the Yakuza will stay in their lane. If the Yukoi Hitike defeated, Stanley Ho can be granted the cas Macau Casino License. Fantastic. Let's get to the port first and see what happens, because they're actually getting reinforcements. So. so next up is Birch Corrupt Officers. So this place was always better for heat, but not by much. We're voting. Because after that, uh, we have 40 seats? How do we not get enough seats here, man? God dang. I guess we haven't done this one in the line we stand on, too. The book is complaint. My bad. Because we can do super Supermarket Dominance. Oh, stability. So we can't do this one. Darn it. Slowly improve. Liquid reserves. Power to get better. Oh no, this one, the power to gets worse. Interesting. But growth increased by 0.33. So power to gets better on this one versus this one. Dang it. I wanted to do this one instead. I should have read that one. This one would have done better to do. My bad. I should have done on stability. Once it changes, it makes it better for everybody. The concept of supermarkets, which originates originally from the US of A, seems to be spreading widely in Guangdong recently. It's located near the residential area for the convenience of consumers. The basic attraction is the convenience of shopping time, which is often extended to evening or 24 hours a day, with a wide selection of products under a single building at a low price. Perhaps it won't be long uh, before a new form of consumption pushes the tradition away. Well, my bad. It is what it is, though. Can you hurry up? There you go. Guess we need some anti-air, huh? Good enough, good for that, that's fine. So we're putting up plenty of roads here. Seven and a half percent would be bad. 
Yuki Aki. The prominent artist Hirata Ashodo appeared out of the Hong Kong bu building with a Japanese consul general exhibiting his paintings for a glimpse of his son. The place was far more bustling than he remember seeing or being told in the past. It was harder for him to see anyone, let alone the man he was looking for. As far as anyone but Consul General Takashima, a good friend of him is from younger, less complicated days, knew Harata simply accompanied his paintings in support of a Greater East Asia Ministry cultural exhibition. But in reality, though showing people his work was always well and good, Harata was looking for a son who had known as Harata Masaharu. He didn't have much time left, and he hadn't seen his son in years. He knew that ever since he had gotten married to the corporate heiress, Masaharu hadn't had any time to keep in touch. But Harata's view was that he had at least tried and keep in contact with his son one way or another, going back inside. Harata was distracted from his reverie by a man examining his paintings with the kind of gaze Harata knew that to be of a painter, like praising a colleague's work. Being so naive, he assumed that the man was a Japanese and introduced himself in that language. The man, speaking with that very slight accent Harata had a strain to notice, and introduced him to an affluent Japanese. Lin Feng Mian, at your service, Mr. Harata. Lin Feng Man, he knew the name. That was the name of a prominent Chinese artistic master, one whose work had been destroyed by reckless soldiers during the war, only for him to remake it from scratch and exhibit it left, right, and center throughout the post-war China. Confirmed with such a luminary of his art, what could he do but nod respectfully as Lin responded? The very same. 1966 Economic Review. Um, if you want to remember this, please go ahead. Get back to work. Oh, now we get three more seats. Well, I didn't want to wait for that, so. Hey, increase the Japanese support. So now we need a GDP of at least 31.341 billion. Um, right now, we don't have enough approval, so we need to increase that anyways. Good. Very good. Should be able to pass that. Hey, it passes. The vote on the public health laws for Guangdong passed with limited difficulty. So any Chong Kong delegates, backed by a sufficient group of Matsushita delegates permitted to do so by the leader, managed to win over the vote of the objections of the Fujitsu and Hitachi delegations. That passed without difficulty. The real difficulty came afterwards, in the form of a few Mingibuka, who used the opportunity given by the passenger of the new law to go off on a tirade against the state front uh, faction. Lee, Murita, you're a pair of bleeding heart good for nothing guys who are trying to force us to go along with your asinine reform of schemes and limit our businesses that suit your liberalizing whims. Don't you idiots realize that Guangdong exists to help poor people realize their innovative visions unencumbered by rules and regulation? If you guys keep going on without somebody like me to challenge you, you'll make this place no different than Japan. You, Marita, are trying to drag us all down to your low, sentimental, pathetic, subhuman level. Well, Lita shook his head and laughed shortly. Marita looked amused, and Masashida was visibly unimpressed. And the rest of the delegates began to fight among themselves as Komai silently left, and Ibuka kept running like a petty imitation of the NSDAP speaker. For once, however, it was a Sony Chong Kong delegation shouting down the Fujitsu and Hitachi opposition, forcing them to form up into an ever tethered group for safety as the Masashida men tried and only partly succeeded in separating the two sides. Yet no support, look at that. We're going to have token regulations from un utterly unregulated, and due to the address of suicides, we get the following bonuses. Increases Chung Kong seats by one. Increases Chinese and Zhujin support. Healthcare quality will get, begin to improve. Re replace emergency support with low income protections. More daily political power. Look at that. Costs a lot more, but poverty gets better. Healthcare gets better. Ooh. I do, highly decreases healthcare, emergency support, effectiveness. Due to environmental protection, Sony gets seats increased by one. More Zhujin support. Due to the support hotlines, you get healthcare quality will get better. Increases Chinese government support. And due to the PSA campaigns, Chinese and Zhujin government support will drastically increase as well. We'll spend a lot of money. And then we'll get even more support. Holy crap. That's insane. So right now, let's take a look-see. 0.09. Could be worse. We have 23 seats, 14 seats, which we're going to get reduced eventually, unfortunately. Um, interesting. And so now, 0.46 deficit. That's not ideal. But then again, we did cut taxes, so it is, it is what it is. Um, and we still want to put some corrupt officials, too. So right now, let's come up here and take a look. Regions of Guangdong. 63%. That's not bad. 74% <clears throat> is not bad. 65%. Overall, not bad at all. 21.8% of Guangdong's total population. I approve. So after that, um, what is the next one we need to do? 41% support. That's not good enough. 43% support. That's not good enough. So, 75% support. So many support. Buying dignity. Fewer than five amendments. Help the bottom line of Guangdong economically increases Chong Kong's initial support for the ordinance. Safety first. Murita comes calling. Increased safety standards increases Sony's initial support for the ordinance. And then we can't choose everything here. <clears throat> Unfortunately. I do want to improve poverty though. It reduces Matsushita seats, which I don't like though. Four hours. Reduces uh, Fujitsu seats. Overhauling the building code. Poverty will begin to improve. And not slowly improve, but just improve. We're going to slowly improve, huh? 46 seats, public ordinance, independent commission, which 
Tactical measures are enough to root out corruption on a prolonged basis. We must take some action to institutionalize anti-corruption measures. The vote will be held soon after this vote is taken. Surely there's enough support, and let it go or suffer the consequences. This will make sure that we can't, like, bribe other parties to vote for our stuff, so we want to wait. Casino license. We'll attempt to remove Stanley Hill's monthly contribution or corruption game. Even as we have worked to influence the war between Stanley Hill and Yokoi Hideki behind the scenes, the Legislative Council has been drawing up plans for establishing and auctioning out the rights to operate all legitimate gambling activities in Guangdong. That will be one of the most lucrative business contracts tenured in Guangdong's history, and now the long-awaited day to bid for the casino contract has arrived, going once, going twice, and destroyed. We're going to do this to help reduce the corruption, and then uh, we've got to keep working on getting more corrupt. Supermarket domination. Yay! I love America. Because then we have to vote on something next. Um, we might... 46 seats is not great, though. This is 41 seats. Jesus Christ. 37? 45? 45? That's not enough. Investing in a future memorial hospital. Healthcare quality continues to improve. First major reform to build a public healthcare safety net in Guangdong. We can wait to do that one. 45, 45, 37, Jesus Christ. Um, 41. Give the Japanese investors a bone. I mean, that makes it really easy to support. Our debts with the Zhujin. Uh, I mean, we could try this one. The police ordinance. Public order ordinance. We have illuminated the path forward for public safety in Guangdong, with new practices and procedures instituted in Guangdong Police Force, and a new modus vivendi with the Kampai Tai. But in case anyone wasn't fully aware and compliant with the new phase of law enforcement in Guangdong, it was formally legislated a program into the law. We must know whether the symbol of cooperation in Guangdong will stand with the future and the rule of law, or will stand finally on the side of betting laws. We need more political power. In search of a pearly fish. Or outside interference. Oh crap. Are you kidding me? Come on. Our ranking military officials were driving around in new expensive Mitsubishi Debonairs. Legislative council members were supporting new watches. As Marita Keo entered his office in the council chambers to start the day's work, he was greeted by a wide grin from one of the policemen guarding his door, revealing a golden tooth where last week there had been nothing. Money was in the air like ozone before a thunderstorm. Unsurprisingly, the first support of the day came from the whip. The tattoo was added again, flushing money into the country at an alarming pace, where it had been only a stepped up instance of the unusual horse shooting that went on in Guangdong, but now it reached proportions suggesting that something deeper was at play. The money was targeting Guangdong's top military men and influential Lego members, yes, but also the colonels of the garrison regiments surrounding the capital, as well as senior bureaucrats in the government departments. Bribery on the sword was, uh, the scale cannot be the work of Hitachi alone, the whip concluded, most likely both Meng Yo and Nissan were assisting. As the whip left the room, Morita Kale puzzled over the possibilities. These were the hard-nosed businessmen who spent every day ringing dimes and nickels out of destitute Chinese factory workers. It wasn't in their nature to be so prolific, yet, but what are their ultimate aim? Hitachi wasn't the only company with money here in Guangdong. Time to bring on wallet. That's so stupid. We already got rid of the influence for them. I mean, they're still here, and I get it and all, but, like, come on. Come on. In search of a pearly fish, the Pearl River was not as inviting as it once was. It was downstream from the electronics factories. It was a sore sight for old eyes. Garbage clumped together at the bends of the river, and the clarity the river once had was mostly gone, replaced with a darkish bluish green tint. It looked nothing like the river of Lamb's childhood. But to be honest, it was not hard to remember the river of Lamb's childhood, especially compared to the polluted Pearl River. Lamb could remember how crystal clear the water looked, how it reflected like jewels in the warmth of the midday sun. Lamb could remember the sw fish swimming through the clear waters. He could remember setting up makeshift traps up and down the river, spending days with his friends building semicircles made from pebbles and small stones designed to catch marine life. And most of all, Lamb could remember those funny little green-white creatures, the fat little chins and the panicked little croaking sounds they made when Lamb got a little too close to him. He put his eyes back to the electronics factories. He realized that they'd been shut. The city sounded a little quieter, he had realized, and the usual smokestacks, truck convoys, and large garbage dumps were not present as they usually were. Lamb eyed up the river once again and seemed a little cleaner. Oh, or was it just his eyes fooling him? Perhaps it would be fresh enough to fish in one day, like they had seen in those ancient photos when Koshu was still named Guangzhou. Lamb scoffed to himself. He wasn't a child. He mustn't have made a fish trap in a decade by now or thrown out a fishing liner for twice that long. Pushing himself back to his feet, Lamb slowly trotted down one of the many streets of Koshu, his mind whirling as he took a step after step. It was a nice slop. And Yang Nang Kyu Yi. 
Then Fiang Mian stuck around after the painting exhibition ended. It was late in the evening, and even Takashima had gone to take his leave, but Harato Shoda left for himself no real choice but to sit down and talk with a man that he knew for a fact was a great luminary of art in the late 20th century. Well, it's not late 20th century, it's like mid-20th century. Harata's curiosity was piqued by the contrast between his and Lin's painting style, whereas Harata's tendency was tra traditional Japanese Nihonga. Lin preferred Western influence modernist artworks. He went over that with Lin, who cheerfully dom discussed it with him, but Lin grew solemn as the conversation went on in the Japanese. Harata, of course, noticed and inquired what seems to be the issue. Guan Dongborn, Lin replied, sighing, It grieves me that I have to converse in my homeland with another painter in a foreign tongue. Harata did not really understand yet. He made his confusion known, but art surely transcends borders in human languages. Lin sighed, saying, We would that that were so, but even the art that does as you say is inseparably influenced by the circumstances in which it is created. At that moment, Harata understood his colleague's feelings more clearly and nodded his understanding. The rest of the conversation proceeded pleasantly enough, and the two painters apart on good terms. Lin bade the other painter farewell, and with a respectful bow that carried a certain finality to it, for knew the way the world was, that they would probably never see each other again. The last redoubt. Leo was pacing back and right in uh, the chief executive's office. Oh. Uh, wearing a trail on the carpet in front of Morita's desk in anticipation. The Morita didn't blame him, despite having a million other things to attend to. The two of them had been cloistered in the room for nearly two hours. The auction started, Lee muttered, at eight, 84, eight, four minutes ago. How is this taking so long? Stanley has the money, he'll get the license, Morita shook his head, but even he had admit he was worried. Oh. Uh, the phone rang, and Lee nearly chipped over himself, jumping to the receiver. The two crowded together in Morita's seat, straining to hear Stanley's voice over the tinny roar of background noise. It's done, Stanley said triumphantly. We have the license, and with money to spare. Lee silently pumped his fist in the air, and Marita smiled before Lee handed the receiver to him. Congratulations, Stanley. Macau's yours. Unfortunately, Stanley breathed. Yukoi and the others weren't so kind as to simply hand over everything to us. Ma Marita's brow furrowed. What do you mean? Yukoi objected to the result, like the running dog he is. Stanley's stone darkened. He said like, uh, he'd, he'd get the leg code to review the license. No sense to give it to the Chinese wastrels and their useful idiots or something like that. Did he now, Marita said, his pitch dropping venomously. Who wants to fight? Let, let us give him one. Great. So I say it before doing that one, just in case. So do we have two in here? Casino license, growth will go up by a lot. Can we at least have uh, help the pass it or Bringing our men in line, Stanley was agitated much that much Marita could see. And he could also see why. He had, Ho had a lot of riding on this new casino license law passing through the Legislative Council. He was not happy with the news that certain legislators within Sony Chung Kong faction were shying away from voting for him. He burst on Marita's office and passionately argued his case for minutes on him. This is what he suggests I do, Stanley, Marita finally said, interrupting Ho's running. Ho stops, seeming surprised at the question. Isn't it obvious? Bribe him. Marita bristled with the boldness of the request, but he simply had acknowledged that Ho had a point. It would be the simplest way to wrangle his faction back in line, but it was really worth engaging in some blatant corruption. Alright, fine. Brings Sony and CK in line. Creates discipline in Sony Chung Kong. That's 15%, 10%. Stanley, that's not how we operate. Master Shida informants. I really want to help. I really do. Master Shida performance sympathy came across even more hollow than over the phone. But you must understand, Marita. I have people under me who are uncomfortable with oversighting, oversight this comprehensive. Marita rubbed his temples. Uncomfortable because of criminals, he thought. But it remains silent that Master Shida continue on the other end of the line. If I could just reassure them that I had people on the inside who could give them warning if any investigations were headed their way, I think I could get them on board. Marita's jaw clinched. Matsushita was asking for its explicit permission to place spies in his new police department to sanction corruption from its very birth. And on the other hand, wasn't corruption ine inevitable in such an institution? It wouldn't be better if he could just simply use his own ends. Fine, you can have it. Inform it so that the company doesn't get in trouble. I'm okay with that. Screw that. There's no extra corruption. Because right now, for this one... We could get okay, so we have two. We need two more seats. We need four here and three here. So you're saying t fifteen percent of Sony. So let's say it's one seat. You might get two. You might get one. And then Chung Kong, ten percent more support. I mean, you get maybe one or two. Fifty-two. Oh, we got actually more than I thought we would. Look at that. What is this? Mud. Oh, don't fight in mud. So, actually, we're trying to do two things at one time. That's kind of insane. Let's see what happens first. The Jitsu support is 30%. It's really hot. It's time to attack. But is it hot enough? 
Are you sure of Matsushita? The simple promise that you'll keep is all I need. Matsushita's signature eye smile rested upon his lips. His hair is nicely kept. His nails clearly trimmed. His suit neatly pressed. All that is necessary for playing the part of a professional and adept business person. Maria tapped a finger against his desk, his stern expression standing in clear contrast with a seemingly welcoming one of Matsushita. Is continued operation of your casino still that important to you? Surely won't leave any dent in your wallets or hamper your operations. Why be so insistent? Maria asked, occasionally peering uh, down towards the contents of the proposed ordinance. Why would it not be important? It's part of my business, is it not? I simply want assurances that this proposal won't jeopardize my interests. It's really not that big of an ask, but Matsushita maintained his calm and orderly demeanor, shifting slightly in a seat to a more comfortable and yet assertive sort of position. What do you have to lose? The license ensures that your representatives in Macau secure the majority of the market. My business is of minimal concern to your stability. Marita could see right through the approachable facade put on by Mas Matsushita. He had seen it far too many times to be fooled by it. The profits from his casinos would definitely be funneled back to the home islands instead of being used to stimulate Guangdong's internal economy, hampering growth. However, he is right that Matsushita's operations would not drastically affect anything, and more support for the ordinance would certainly be welcome. Matsushita's tapped gently on his wristwatch. Time is slowing, my friend. I wouldn't suggest you take it. You can totally control the market, no interference from anybody. How much you lose, make the promise. Do we have. Do we have the votes for it? Casino. We have the votes for the casino, so I'm not concerned. Playing favorites. Morita's desk was covered with letters. Letters from politicians within his own faction. Al asking for a piece of the new Guangdong police force. One wanted a cushy second job overseeing some local precinct. One wanted to make sure that the police wouldn't infringe on his personal liberty, by which he meant shut down his favorite brothel. Hey. One wanted to make sure the Financial Crimes Division didn't look at his tax reports with too fine a comb. Like me. Morita sighed, looking at them. The new police force was supposed to be honest and an impartial tool to protect the citizens. But if he wanted it to exist at all, it looked like he had to compromise for the sake of his own allies. This is for the police force thing, though. If we do that, maybe we'll get it? I don't know. The challengers. Oh, crap. Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? So, I, oh, are you... Mm -hmm. It still says we have 52 votes, so... What will happen, it'll be interesting to say the least. There's no front line here, too. Hmm. Okay, look at this. Ibuka's demands. Uh, Morita picked up the, on the third ring, and his eyes went wide when he heard the voice of Ibuka Masaru. Morita, Ibuka began. I want to reach out to you because despite our differences, we both want to improve the state of policing in Guantan. I think we can help you do that. Marita's curiosity overwhelmed his suspicion. How exactly? I want to make sure that your police reform program puts emphasis on statistical, rational methods of crime reduction, which take into account human nature. Marita gritted his teeth. He knew exactly what Ibuka meant by that. He'd long ago been privy to a conversation in which Ibuka rallied against or railed against the childish humanism that crime was caused by material need and not moral failings, as well as the soft hearted utopianism of trying to rehabilitate criminals and reintegrate them into society. If your proposal meets these requirements, Ibuka continued, I'll give you my political support. Sorry, but I don't think we can do that. So this one's for the police. Um, the police will embrace statistical and rational methods for managing crime in the state of Guangdong to make Ibuka Masaru and Fujitsu support the bill. Let's take a look-see. Let's, let's, let's do the passage of the casino license bill first, and then we'll bribe Fujitsu, maybe. Um, the vote on the matter essentially handed the Guangdong underworld over to Stanley Ho went smoothly, despite the desperate efforts of Yokoi's ass assorted Legislative Council of Sycophants to disrupt the hearings. It was not lack for trying on their part. Some of them shouted during proceedings, racial slurs, I like that. Re uh, regular profanity, not bad. Sports, slogans, outright gibberish, nothing was off limits. A few hostile Leko members even tried to read out long pieces of classical literature, such as Agokura, or the I Ching, or the thousand character classic in hopes of filibustering the proceedings after the American and British style. One particularly fantastical legislator resorted to reading the most recent chapter of Astro Boy aloud. <laughs> Voice of Autumn Morito's mind were the two different attempts to call in bomb scares that forced brief evacuations not longer than 30 minutes in between them. You gotta do what you gotta do. But it was not enough. The vote went through, which with a favorable result. Yokoi Hideke was utterly defeated. His operations were not merely weakened, but hamstrung, and Stanley Ho was now able to run the underworld legitimately. As for the vote, after the vote, Stanley, Lee, and Morita, joined by various loyalists, sat down for dinner and a drink, and broke out a bottle of wine to celebrate the continuing prosperity, and just as important, the safety of Guangdong by the hands alone. They celebrated hard that night, for they knew that Guangdong would be their oyster forever. Prosperity, they shouted, as the glasses clinked, so... Unfortunately, the tribes get more control. It is what it is. I'm not concerned about that too much. We can reduce that later. Growth increased by 0.45%, which is fantastic, because we wouldn't need that. Um, state GDP modifier. Very good, very, very, very good. Remove Stanley Ho's monthly corruption gain. Fantastic. The one I really wanted the most out of all of this. Um, decreases a lot of things. Decreases police control. Increases Japanese expat government support, which is not ideal, but um, nothing happens. Good. 
So now with that done, we should have the police vote, right? Uh, the man sitting before Chief Executive Morito Keo had taken care to distinguish or disguise affiliations. With some arriving hours before the scheduled appointment and others darting into the government complex seconds before the designated time, nobody wore the lapel pins that were the hallmark of any self-respecting corporate executive. Hmm. Morito Keo didn't need to see the pins anyways. The manner of their arrival made it clear that they were from a company out of good graces of the government, and since Hitachi would scarcely agree willingly to anything Sony had to offer, they only left one option, Fujitsu. Murito Kao suppressed a smile as he watched the company suits stumble through their opening remarks. Their obsequiousness. A far cry from the rancor and self-assured of who they represented was an indication enough that they were prepared to be swayed of Morita Akeo's side in the Legislative Council. We would, of course, require some consideration of the difficulties of taking the step, you understand. Murita Kao's eyes narrow. Just because they were prepared to be swayed didn't mean that they wouldn't be asked for anything in return. A uh, plane ticket back to Japan. Some special consideration for a factory under construction, or a briefcase stuff with full of cash. It was, after all, how business was done, so if we do this one, we get 25% speed, 25 smart seats for Shizitsu, and reduce 10% here. We're 70 70, we have 43 seats. Well, we don't even know. We don't need them. We can't meet them, need, but we can try. Mm. I don't know. I'll see. Let's see what happens with this first, because I really don't know what's going to happen. I like that we passed this one, which is great, but still. 39, Jesus Christ, 39 seats, are you kidding me? Memorial Hospital. Uh, despite our efforts, healthcare in Guangdong is still miserable, even if seriously injured, unlucky people who lack money die while wandering around free clinics. With the help of Sony in Chung Kong, we'll open a large public hospital offering 24-hour accident-free emergency services. This provision of healthcare is a uh, noblest oblige that, uh, that can truly demonstrate a good faith through Zhujin in Chinese. What do you think of it? Of uh, the Morita Keo Hospital. Hotline for petty corruption. Uh, did I read this earlier? Yeah, I did. And then audit senior officials. The AKHK journalist was writing a fluff, fluff piece on how Hong Kong transformed after being liberated from the imperialist British. For this, she interviewed an old man in Diamond Hill. After some sumai and lemon tea, she asked, Da Ren, what was life like in Hong Kong before the civil authority? Back then, things were not so civil, said the man as he chewed on a toothpick. We paid taxes to the government house and kept the streets clean. The Guai Lu paid no taxes and left their horse crap on the sidewalk. Then has anything changed when Japan drove the British out of Hong Kong? Certainly, we now pay the ribbon so they can sell us their horse crap. As the saying goes, the more things change, the more they say the same. Chief Executive Morita plans to prohibit such double standards within the government's upper echelons by bringing their financial records under close scrutiny, though it would undoubtedly invite the ire of the friends in the home aisles. So it says we're not even... Okay, so we might not even pass it because of what's going on. It's doubling at the same time? Hmm. So let's let it save first. I'm glad we saved earlier. Alright, the deficit's going down. Or, uh, not the deficit, but uh, a debt. Underwater sign it. Oh, look at this. If you wanted this, please go ahead. So much corruption do we get right now, anyways? 0.37, which is way better than what it was before. Way better. It's wet here. Very wet. Recall, 1955, December. Here, all the accounts, warehouses, and prototypes are accounted for. Stanley Ho pushed a millennial fold across the folding table, his voice reverberating in the back room of the Mahjong parlor. All of them, Lee said, unable to hide his skepticism in his voice. The Fujitsu debt collectors nearly found us several times. They had to be founding a few of the... Uh, read it, Stanley reclined in his chair, smug, smiling smugly. Everything you left behind, we kept safe for you. Stanley's right, Marita breathed, flipping through the pages. Besides, the caretaker's payments were agreed on. Everything is where it should be. Once we collected all, we could be back in business under a month. Marita only both cracked wry smiles at the good news, which held an end to the month spent running from the safe house to safe house, sheltering it with sympathizers and coaching them beyond. They'd weed through a web of lawyers, gangsters, and even a few camp by time men. The book had been relentless to try to secure the spoils of his potent uh, patent lawsuit. But Vegeta's attention had inevitably shifted back no matter uh, to matters of silicon circuits and boardroom politics. Time was money and time spent looking for missing men was simply unprofitable. That had prompted Stanley to signal the all clear bringing Marita and Lee out of hiding. The police in the Yakuza knew better than to step too deep into my territory, Stanley Crowley. Now all that's left is I sign the incorporation papers, and at least suspect becomes of what has happened this year, then Marita is in charge from now on. Okay, so it looks like it didn't even pass. Did it? Well. Nothing actually happened. Public order ordinance. Public health ordinance. Well, I might go back and actually redo that because I don't want to double up on the same thing at the same time. So, I think we'll end it there, unfortunately. 
So if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we continue on with the story of uh, Sony, Sony and Murita Chaos State of Guangdong. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.